Howdy, 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 everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Nerd Hell. It's me, Robinson, and my persona would be Cesar Chavez. Oh, okay, hey, my name is Stanley, and I am the Elden Ring. Not the Elden Lord, I'm just the Ring. Maybe I am become Eld, Elden. I've beat that game like three times already now. So, you know what? So has my friend. <laughs> yeah. No, like I've, I've which is... put 75 hours into it, not counting the first character that I made, which had eight hours onto it. So I'm looking at like a fairly, a fairly well done playthrough of this game. And I think I only have like four uh, achievements left, which is like to get the like other different endings that I don't want to because I still feel bad for getting them. <laughs> Right, because there's one where it's like you can burn everything down and make world hell. I'm like, I don't like that one. That sounds awful. <laughs> that sounds really no, that bad sounds to me. That mean. That's mean. Yeah. No. Fuck that. It sounds. Fuck all of that. So, dude, I don't know. I need like a book of this lore to come out. I need George R. R. Martin number one to finish the Game of Thrones series, and then I need him to write a book about this one. Or just release some of his, like, <laughs> author notes, right? Something there. Yeah. That, I find that, like, super interesting about these games because people usually don't replay games. And if they do, it's like, I'm speedrunning it. Or yeah. I'm going for this ending, right? Well, like, there's and a guy... everyone I know... Yeah, there's a guy like, on YouTube, right, that is... He's from Korea, and he does these things where he has a level one character... And he goes up against all these bosses with a buckler parry shield and a club. And just no hit, no damage, just absolutely destroys. It's so humbling, right, to see people that are that good at something that I like. And I'm just like, great, good on you, my guy. I'm going to go struggle with this person that you defeated in three minutes with a fucking level one character. So, yeah. My roommate uses the giant purple finger of Flick. Oh, that sounds fun. The, bi the big finger stick of poke. Oh, is that the one where it's just like a bunch of hands uh, on a sword? It's the sword hand. No, it's like it's like a stick. Like imagine a corn dog, but instead of the corn dog part, it's a giant purple finger. Oh shit! Okay, yeah. Yeah, I also hate that enemy. That the like multi-hand enemy. That thing is weird looking. Which one? I mean, there's several different ones, right? It's it's just a giant purple hand that comes after you. It's like gah, 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 gah. oh, you mean like the disembodied hands that like run yeah. after you? Oh, so I, yeah. No, I know where he's they're at. They're gross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're gross. They're, they're gross. I mean, what do you what are you talking about? Those are thing from you know or not thing. What's the hand from the Adams family? I have no clue, but I know what oh, wait, you're talking about. Oh wait, no, it about. is. It's it's thing, right? Because Uncle It is just like the hair creature, right? And Thing is the disembodied hand that does everything. So, uh, yeah, dude. Um, what are you talking about? That's just things like older cousins. How dare you make if, fun of? Why such is he? A... Why is he purple? And why is he pimply? Why? And why does he want to grab me so much? <laughs> I don't know. That's why probably... do your hands want to grab anything? <laughs> That's pro that video game, that section is like just what a bag of chips sees when I come in. Yeah. It's just, you're like, oh shit, it's the hand. <laughs> the claw, the claw. right? <laughs> Dude, I... And actually... Yeah, go ahead. I do have a, I do have a story about Elden Ring, but what have you, um, what did you want to say? Uh, yeah, no, just the inside joke has been kind of like, um, at the anime club recently, it's just been kind of like, uh... Whenever, like, something is here, we're just like, is that the Elden Ring? Because we watch Video Game Donkey, right? And he released, um, <laughs> he had, like, yeah, this thing it. on his stream. Well, he had a stream before he released the video. And on his stream, he was just like, is this the Elden Ring? Is the Elden <laughs> Ring down here? Do, do you know where the Elden Ring is? <laughs> I and, found it. Yeah. So we've just been, uh, like, anytime, just like, okay, great, like, you know, you need to go sign this. This is not the Elden Ring. Go get the Elden Ring or that kind of shit. So that's just been the inside joke. But hey, dude, the game, the game's awesome, right? I don't know if I would call it the best game ever, which is what a lot of people uh, have been saying online. But have you seen some of the salty, salty, salty developers that um, 
like make open world content just start shitting on Elden Ring and from software? I actually did have an article about that. Oh yeah, go ahead. Let's hear it because I want to. I want to shit on them too, right? This is from um, Windows Central by uh, Mr. Jez Gordon. Um, as Elden Ring hits 12 million copies sold, AAA the game publishers have a hard lesson to learn. So, long story short, Mr. Gordon, um, this is an opinion piece, but I believe it's mm -hmm. correct opinion. Okay. He just he just goes about talking about how many AAA developers have fucked up in their open world gaming endeavors. Um, in one quote specifically, we've seen Ubis Ubisoft soullessly ship service game after service game only for them to die quietly in obscurity afterwards. Okay. Um, we've seen EA tear its legendary single-player studios to pieces, forcefully trying to transform them to service game factories. And he just gives um, a bunch of reasons why Elden Ring is kicking ass over these Assassin's Creeds, over these Horizon Dawns. And one thing that I truly believe is world building. Um, he says it's point one world bid world building over Hollywood production values. Okay. Because here there's an actual world you can go explore. It's like, it's like the best thing I've ever heard about Breath of the Wild is you can go anywhere, and guess what? You went to the right place. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, what is it the issue i have with like assassin's creed games right is that i played the most recent one valhalla right because i like i like viking shit right like it's it's uh i vibe with that kind of shit but um one of the biggest issues that i had with it is that halfway through the the game right i would get transported back to the modern world and there was like a storyline that I had no idea who anyone was. I had no idea who the what the stakes were. And it was one of those things that was just like, they should have just made a Viking game, right? Like, they should have <laughs> just made the Viking game and left yeah. all the other stuff out. Because the other stuff, I really did not give a fucking shit about. So, you know. Yeah, but but but, but if, if we do that, then how... If we don't put Assassin's Creed in the name, how will you know that it's an Assassin's Creed game? Um, I don't know. Don't make it an Assassin's Creed game, honestly. Make, like, historical video games or something like that. Make a new IP. Don't make it Assassin's Creed. Wait a minute. Right? Wait. Wait a goddamn minute. You're telling me you haven't played Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed 2, Assassin's Creed's Brotherhood, Revelation 3, Black Flag, Rogue, Unity, Syndicate, Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla? Well, I've played and Valhalla, and I've played the first one. I played the first one back on the Xbox 360, and that, well, at no the time, I was like, dude, this is great. Like, it was, I got to saw historic uh, Crusader time Jerusalem, sorry, Palestine at the time, and that was actually pretty cool, right? And as a kid, right, I played the game, and I liked it, but then, you know, I did not play the other ones because I wasn't really interested in the historical setting, Right? The Renaissance for me is just kind of meh, especially when they describe it as the Renaissance, because number one, people don't like wake up and go, we certainly are living in a Renaissance. It's not a thing, right? <laughs> and the other Leonardo, point, where are my blades? We are we are certainly living in an age of Trump or an age of stupidity, right? Like we don't do that, right? That's like later on people to do. Um but the issue that I had, right, is that, like, I kind of fell out of it because it was one of those things of the storyline. I was like, it's interesting, right? But I was just not when they were like, oh, alien technology, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, I'm out, right? I'm I'm out, right? I don't I don't care. I just don't care. And then My Unity, not thing. Unity, came out. Uh, what was the one? It was um, where you're in London and like the 1880s Syndicate. or something. Syndicate, yeah. Syndicate and or Unity. I um, think both of no, them are the same. Unity, Unity is the one with the French Revolution, right? So. I don't know. I stopped playing after like... I stopped playing... I didn't play Revelations, but then I got um, three, and I'm like, oh, cool, American history. Yeah. And then I just stopped from there. Yeah. No, because... Um, what is it? I've only like really interestedly played like the games that I found fascinating, right? Like I could drop the entire storyline 
of Assassin's Creed, right? And just do like the character and the historical shit, right? And I would be perfectly fine. I only remember Assassin's Creed by like what historical setting they are and not the fucking like plot line, which is kind of funny because I've played three of these games, right? To completion, three of them. The first one, you, or what is it? Uh, Syndicate. I actually like Syndicate. I'm not going to lie. Um, it was okay uh, for me. Like, I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, I've always wanted to use Syndicate when we talk about, like, industrial revolutions. Talk about, like, England being a fucking mess and being fucking, like, gross. I've always wanted to bring my PlayStation in and just be like, okay, great. Today we're going to explore really gringy parts of London. And, and if you're and if you're all behaved by the and we finish early by the end of this week we'll play some FIFA. Yeah, well, no, cuz that fuck that <laughs> game. But the other part of it is that like Syndicate was okay. I thought it was fine. I liked the fact that you could play as a female protagonist, right? And so um the next game I played was Valhalla, right? Cuz yeah, it sounds cool and Odyssey, I really was like, oh, Greeks, cool, right? I'm not much into, like, ancient Greece or that kind of thing. I think it's played out. It was, like, really popular back when I was in high school to do, like, Greek mythology and Greek shit, and I'm just kind of burnt out on it, right? And probably the same way people will be when they talk about Vikings in the future, right? They'll be burnt out on Viking shit, but still. Um, like, I was playing this game... Um, and I'm playing Valhalla, and I guess this sounds like uninteresting conversation, really, because, you know, I'm describing playing a game. But I actually liked it. I thought the historical settings were cool. I thought, like, they did as best as they could, right, to capture some kind of authenticity to the time. Because fuck historical accuracy. I want authenticity. But, you know, th the whole part, like I said, is... I just wanted the Viking game. I didn't want the Assassin's Creed shit. Like, that shit does not interest me at all. I don't care. I really don't. But <laughs> like, the concept when I played the first game of, oh, the genetic memories of your ancestors live inside your bones or your cells, so we gotta use this machine to scan it so that we can relive, like, human events and that kind of shit. That fascinates me as a historian and as, like, a mind thought. But the chance of that actually being a thing is fucking non-existent. And, um, uh, but it's still good sci-fi, right? But then they just kept saying the, and doing the exact same thing over and over and over. And I can tell you this right now, I've played three games spanning, what, 20 years? In the Assassin's Creed intellectual property, they all play the exact same. Like, they all play the exact fucking same. The first one, <laughs> whatever syndicate was, and the last one. They all play the same and it's really disappointing to see that no one else has actually kind of like evolved their gameplay or actually did anything new to that kind of shit how are you going to be stealth as a motherfucking viking robinson right I people will say knew that, that you were coming because they could see your boat on the ocean right yes <laughs> we we talked about this we yeah. um, the vikings did not have a system where they sent out warnings to rivaling islands <laughs> No, they're just <laughs> like, like, what was it when we were watching like Wolf Walkers or some kind of shit? Or we were talking about the other movie that came out, The Book of the Kells, where like the entire book is like this kid is like a monastery, like, you know, learning how to be a monk in a monastery and learning how to write. And then all of a sudden, like Vikings come in and kill the entire town. I'm like, that's yes. what happened, right? There was no warning system. And the only warning system was if you could see the boats on the horizon. And then that was the time that it was just like, well, fuck, we are fucked, right? That I will was... <laughs> say, I, I will say one thing about Assassin's Creed, Black Flag kind of brought it back yeah. with the ship gameplay because yeah. apparently somebody was just like, you know what, let's actually make a fun game and put like effort into the ship building aspect and then they just abandoned it. But also, you're completely wrong, Stanley, because there were no microtransactions in the first game. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I think that's fine. Um, I was kind of a little pissed that there were microtransactions in Valhalla, right? Because they're mostly cosmetic, and but they look really cool. And I'm like, ah, I'm. They're playing upon my weakness of I want my character to look, you know, fucking like good, right? Or how I would want to look as that thing. 
but then at the same time, I'm like, but also, I fucking hate Eve Jomo of Ubisoft, and I do not like the Assassin's Creed IP the way that they have kind of abused it. I'm not, I just don't, I, they should have just spent their time doing authentic historical stories, and they would have made better games. But, hey, whatever. This is not about me, right? <laughs> Still. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently, Ubisoft people got real salty about um, Elden Ring and then started commenting about how they don't care about how, you know, what is it? They don't care about the user experience at From Software. And I'm like, y'all don't fucking care about the user experience. Dude, it is so mind numbing to have to go on fetch quests all the fucking time. God. Do you know why hey. Elden Wing Ring works over Assassin's Creed? Is because there's actual stakes and you don't have to fucking craft if you don't want to. Right? <laughs> you don't have to go get like goods and make items and go do that shit. If you want to, that is fine. But the <laughs> I don't know. Assassin's Creed IP makes me so mad sometimes because there are hints. I was about of to. I was about to say they had crafting back in Brotherhood and making like twenty different kinds of bombs was fun. Yeah, well, like that's fine, right? Because that fits with the whole. Because um, Brotherhood is the Renaissance one. Is that the? I don't. I can't. It's remember. got um, Ezio. Like I played the entire yeah, Ezio yeah, like storyline, and that was too. Brotherhood and Revelations. Yeah, because Ezio was. Wait, no, I didn't play Revelations. Yeah. Um, still, yeah, Ezio was uh, the Renaissance, right? So it made sense, right? Because you got motherfucking Leonardo da Vinci being a weirdo, right? And he's like, Where I am my a bomb. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just, I can't, I can't care about this, right? And so, my thing though is that Ubisoft, it is hard. And it does not really look good when you're a developer and you're someone who is shitting on the success of others. If you're someone who's shitting on the success of others, you know, and you're in that field, right? Like if I looked at another at a coworker and I was like, I fucking hate them. God damn it. Why are they to fucking get that right? That's okay to internalize that and kind of use that as like a maybe I should do better or maybe I do something differently that they don't right? for a little introspection. But to really publicly go out on Twitter and kind of, like, shit on a corporation that has not sold their soul to the almighty dollar and has actually provided some highly, some, like, really good games, right? Because look at the, uh, look at what Ubisoft has put out with Assassin's Creed versus what From Software has put out with, like, the Soulsborne series, right? When was the last, when was the last, um... The last from from soft game. It was Demon Souls. It was wasn't it? Uh, no, because that was the that was Blue Point Studios, right? Because Demon uh, Souls. Okay. Uh, Demon Souls is technically. So, so a part what of was the, the, what was the last one then? It was Sekiro, oh. right? And that was Sekiro. 2019, right? So okay, so three years. Yeah. So it took three years for um, FromSoft to make a new game. How many Ubisoft games have come out in the last oh, since from, 2019? Oh, from like 2019. <laughs> Uh, let me let me see. Actually, I can actually. I'm trying to find this too. <laughs> Ubisoft games, right? Um, it's the you got what is it? Far Cry Six, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, or what is it? Uh, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Extraction, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon, like Ubisoft, right? Makes shit games. Like I'm sorry, Ubisoft fans, but deep in the heart of hearts, you know it's fucking true. Like, the the instance, right, the whole thing about this is that if I were to compare Sekiro, right, to Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which one has actually the better gameplay? 100% like Sekiro. And before anyone says that I'm just fangirling out on From Software Games, yeah, of course I am. 100%. You know, the thing is, though, is that if something is good, I will gush about it. If something is awful, I will rant about it. That's what this podcast is here for. For me to, like, just unload my frustrations. So here's where you get it wrong. Um, In 2019, Ubisoft released a masterpiece, uh, Rabbids Coding. Okay. 
Cool. You can learn to code with the Rabbids. Yeah, great. Thank you. I mean, I, I would have loved that as a kid. I love the Rabbids game. Yeah. But then again, that's another that's another IP that they've just kind of done shit all with, right? Is Rayman. Mm-hmm. Because, so. yeah, they do, like, sometimes they'll put out a masterpiece. Like, Rayman Legends, masterpiece. Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom, masterpiece. Yeah. Uh, Ra- Raven Rabbids 2, back on the Wii? That, that was the best party game ever. It beats out every single Mario party. Yeah. But, yeah, no, they're just in the cycle of... Push out as many games as we can, and see. Try just put everything in the marketing. See if we can trick the rubes into buying it. Yeah, I just don't. That's I. And the other part that I have an issue with is that we've obviously been following the whole like Blizzard controversy, Activision Blizzard. Um, it was not long ago that Ubisoft had the same uh, like same like accusations against them, right? So Ubisoft is just a shit company, just like fucking Activision Blizzard. They both are horrible games, right? And they both have protected, like, people who hurt people. And it can tell, you can tell, right? Like, Robinson, a game that is made with passion, you can obviously tell how much that passion shines through it, right? Elden Ring, compared to Assassin's Creed, it is two completely different worlds, right? Right? One is a game where people know what they want to do. Like, the thing about Miyazaki and the thing about his whole deal with making video games is that he breaks all the conventional methods of what it means to tell a good story or what it means to, like, make a good game. Because a lot of people... the, The trick is to not tell the gamers that there is a story. Well, yeah. Like, they had that contest back in 2016 of, like, whoever could accurately describe what, like, Dark Souls 3, like, what the story was, could, like, win a free trip to Japan to see Miyazaki or some shit like that. I'm like, okay, that sounds like Vati Vidya is going to win that one, and he didn't even win, right? Because that's the thing about Dark Souls and the thing about the Soulsborne series is there's a lot of things that you're not going to know or really understand, And that's basically what the cosmic horror of life is. If you look at Bloodborne, right? Bloodborne is essentially the same fucking thing of, oh shit, there are monsters that I do not see, right? But when you gain enough insight and you finally see them, it's like, oh, this must be what insane people look at, right? It is the cosmic horror. I know know what it's like to be Dan Aykroyd. Yeah. And his uh, drinking too much uh, Crystal Skull vodka, but still. It's real, I tell you. <laughs> yeah. And the um, the whole issue, right, about this that I have is, number one, don't shit on someone else in public, right, in their success. That's fine if you want to internalize it later. Number two, y'all make bad games, so you really have no... <laughs> No, any, any room to talk about this, right? You you keep saying I have no bitches, but where are yours? I know, right? You're just like, ah, you, well, they're certainly maidenless, you know? That's the, that's the fucking, I just don't, dude, I don't know. No I, maidens? Yeah, well, because the, there's these things called finger maidens that upgrade your armor and your stats and that kind of shit, right? And so when you wake up in this game, in Elden Ring, you the first person that you talk to is like this guy. He's like, oh, you're here, but also maidenless. Go die in a, uh, in a ditch somewhere. <laughs> and you're just like, oh, shit, fuck you. You, you ain't got no bitches. <laughs> you got no maidens. No maidens. <laughs> Yeah, but oh, here's the thing, funny. that's that's the issue, right? Is that these the Ubisoft and the Gorilla Studios people that like piled on on how bad Elden Ring is, they are maidenless hoes. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. They're just maidenless. That's what I'm going to use every single time now someone is, you know, uh, a salty, salty bitch. You ain't got no maidens. <laughs> they're 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 maidenless. <laughs> Oh, they're maidenless. They might as well go die in a bridge or under under a ditch or somewhere. I don't know. Fucking dude, I just I I I don't know. I should be I don't know why this was a strong reaction from me, 
when I heard this right, it's just, I think it's just shitty, right? Because the video game industry is very toxic in itself. So, you know, you should be uplifting people, right, in your work. And be proud of, like, you know, the fact that you, like, know these people. I would fucking love to interview someone from software, right? Or someone that does anything with video games and understand, like, that stuff. I'm not going to be mad of their success because I'm, like, happy that they're actually doing something that they want to. It's... It's petty. I'm mad. I, it's I, petty I, bullshit. I, I am mad that they're doing something they want to and I'm not... I'm to I'm toxic like that. I'm a real gamer. Okay, well, then stop being maidenless, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got me. What? But what if you are a maiden? Can that be? <laughs> I'm not maidenless. Oh, I gosh. am the maiden. <laughs> Please no. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> writing off, uh, writing off the back of that, um, Pokemon Legends Arceus is able to fend off Elden Rings as Elden Ring as Japan's best-selling game in February. Okay. Cool. So I did like, not expect that. I honestly did not. Yeah, but like I thought Elden Ring was going to take it. I dude, I don't know. Like Elden Ring has already beaten out tons of games in other continents, right? Um, so, no, I'm pretty sure it's the number one game. <laughs> I was going to say number one game on Steam, you know, where you can't get Pokemon Arceus. Mm -hmm. But no, I, I like honestly thought Elden Ring would be like the number one selling game well, of I think all time right now. I think you're appealing to two different customers, right? Is that Pokemon Arceus, you know, it's Pokemon, right? So it's more accessible. But Bracket Man. Elden Ring has that from software logo and people go, I don't know if I want to bash my head against the wall until I win. Right. That's the that's the best part. That's where the fun begins. But if you want to talk about like friendly, accessible IPs, uh, Harry Potter. So I, I've never cared for Harry Potter growing up. Because oh, like shit. I love Harry I get... Potter. Like I that kills me because I fucking hate J.K. <laughs> Rowling. Just kidding, when... Rowling. <laughs> J.K. Yeah. J.K. Love you. And um, it's because every time I would get in trouble, my mom would make me read. And like at one point, I had the entire collection of Harry Potter. Yeah. So like, just in my mind, I'm like, oh, I'm reading Harry Potter. I must have done something wrong. Mm. But. So everybody's hella excited for the Hogwarts Legacy game. So much so that State of Play, you know, official PlayStation Direct, mm -hmm. just just made just made a fifteen minute Hogwarts Legacy video. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, as someone who know who like I I know Harry Potter, I just don't care about it. This game looks dope. Yeah, because it looks it's great. <laughs> yeah, it seems that they they're gonna do like the yeah, do whatever you want. Yeah. Because in the game, like, I just assume it's like, ah, you have your list of spells. I thought it was just going to be a RPG, right? Mm -hmm. But it turns out there's a lot of things you can do. For example, if you want, master out herbology yeah. and then throw killer plants at people. Yeah, dude. I was I actually watched that, too. And that was like everything I wanted when I was a kid in a video game. Oh, yeah? Right? Tell me about it, then, like, because you, you know more than I do. Um, So, Harry Potter is one of those weird IPs for me, especially because, remember how we had that discussion of how do you separate the uh, artist from the art, right? Because um, we had previously talked about how Roroni Kitchen was really cool, but the guy who made Roroni Kitchen, the mangaka, is a pedophile, right? And so you're kind of <laughs> like, oh! like this anymore and then you're like no i still <laughs> like the story i still like that i just think the guy who made it is a fucking asshole that's kind of like how i feel about like harry potter right now is because harry potter when i was younger it came out in god when was it like 97 i can't remember um i think it was the first book but still i was in elementary school right yeah, it was. It was 1997. So it came out in 1997. I was in elementary school and we had these contests, right, where it was trying to get kids to read more. And you and get so, the pizza party. Yeah. Well, no, I was solely responsible um, for that pizza party. Yeah. But I mean, I was, too, because my parents only let me watch an hour of TV a day. Right. So I spent the rest of the time reading. But 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 OK, so 
uh, Harry Potter, right? We got to read it. My parents had to actually make sure there wasn't actual witchcraft in it. We've talked about this before. And when they it's finally beautiful. gave the approval, right? I downed all those books. I fucking like read all of them. We were in um, England, right? When the third Harry Potter book came out, which is my favorite Harry Potter book, The Prisoner of Azkaban. And we got the um, we got the British version of it, right? Which is really fucking cool. And it was really fucking cool to read it. And I read that book because we were in London for like a couple weeks, right? And I read it in three days. Which, you know, as a fucking child, right? That's amazing. But still. Yeah, that means that was the only thing you were doing. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I mean, like, I've been to London and England a couple of times. So it's kind of, like, not, like, a big thing for me. What but a flex. What, what a, a flex. flex. <laughs> yes, what a flex, right? Um, but, I mean, it would be like you going to Mexico, right? To visit family. It's the exact same kind of shit, right? So, yeah, and in both of our cases, I have to swim to get back. Yeah, right. Um, but my, um, we had those parties, right, where if you read the Harry Potter books and you had straight A's, then the library would throw, like, an entire day where you got to miss school and you got to compete in Harry Potter shit and do games and have fun and we would, like, watch the movie at the end of the day. You know what? My school did the exact same thing for Diary of a Wimpy Kid, and oh, I was, I was, I was, I had a, I was religiously into the Diary of a Wimpy Kid books. Yeah, yeah, but you can obviously see like my attachment to it, right? The oh, other yeah, part I of it that it. I liked about Harry Potter was the whole fact of like, you know, you can rise above your like settings, right? You can rise above your settings. You can be whoever you want. Love is love. Like, all the good, like, fucking so, liberal so, bullshit, right? That so, with that, um, what are you excited about about the gameplay, then? So, the whole thing about the gameplay is I... Um, my my thing, right, before I answer that question, is that I'm torn, right, because I like Harry Potter, but I hate J.K. Rowling. I hate her so much. But to answer your question... Um, I am excited because you get to create your own character. You get to look however you want and you get to be in Hogwarts as a fucking student. Right. Which was one of the things that I remember as a kid being so desperate to do. Right. Was to go to Hogwarts or at least the American equivalent of whatever the fuck that was. Right. Um, and it was it's one of those things of, like, I've played the Harry Potter games, like, on the Nintendo GameCube when they came out back in the day, and I remember them really fondly, but I didn't like the fact that I had to just play as Harry, and it was basically, like, movie tie-in games, right? Where they just hit the plot points of the movie, and you play, uh, those you know, are never the Those game. are never the best. Yeah, but, I mean, like, as someone else, like, I really wanted this to be a thing, and I really wanted this to be a thing for a long time. Um, cause I mean, have you ever found your Harry Potter house? I believe I am Hufflepuff. Okay. Uh, you're Hufflepuff. I'm Ray. I'm the, the dweebs. <laughs> I'm you're, you're the dweebs. I'm the nerd. Right. So I'm the fucking like Ravenclaw person. Right? I'm basically, I'm basically, um, the fucking Jigglypuff of the Harry Potter world. Uh huh. Yeah. Nobody knows who I am. Nobody knows what I've done. Nobody knows if I'm good or not, but I'm there. Yeah. Howdy. Yeah. Just, whatever, right? Meanwhile, I'm fucking studying because I have, like, <laughs> essentially the Irish equivalent of whatever a tiger mom is, right? So, mm. um, no, Robinson, do you know what tiger mom is? Uh, a cougar? <laughs> no. No. What's a tiger mom? All. Dude, a tiger mom is, like, an Asian parent who, like, basically beats their kids to, like, study more. The funniest thing I heard, I sorry to interrupt, but the funniest thing I've heard about that was this Asian comedian who was talking about that very same thing. He's like, "Well, why do your parent, why do Asian parents want their kids to be doctors? It's like money and status. That's it. What about helping people? Helping people doesn't even come up in the conversation of being a doctor. <laughs> I know, yeah. If any, if anything, helping people is an unfortunate byproduct of yeah. becoming a doctor." <laughs> Well, like, that's what I, that's what I'm 
talking about, like, that's essentially, like, what Ravenclaw is, is essentially, like, all the kids who have, like, overbearing parents that want them to make good grades. So, uh. you know, that is um, essentially my high school career. Um, <laughs> I remember uh, when I was in elementary school, I started having anxiety attacks. And my school therapist, essentially, the school counselor essentially told my mom that maybe I should not have she shouldn't put so much pressure on me to perform. And my mom laughed at her. And well, God damn. <laughs> right. So like, I I... <laughs> there are situations where like moms define the counselors or something like that is like good or bad. Like yeah. uh, one, one like semi good situation is when I was in elementary school um, and um, they wanted to medicate me for my ADHD. And my mom was like, but he's a kid. He's not going to sit down and just listen up. Like, that's what kids do. Yeah. Yeah. And then we got that where it's like, maybe you should be nicer to you, kid. Um, no. No. Yeah. No, mine no, was thanks. essentially I had uh, full-blown panic attacks um, as a kid. And my mom was just like, those aren't panic attacks. They're not real. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Mommy. It's Love made up by the communist agenda. I know, right? You um, don't own my son. I own my son. He's not our property. He's my property. Yeah, right. Um, it takes a village to raise a child. Ha! Huh, right, is what she would say to that. But still. Um, what does that mean? Because I, I it takes more than, like, parents to raise kids properly. Ah, nature it's, versus it, nurture. That does not fit here, Robinson. I don't know what it means. <laughs> no, you, that really does not fit here, man. <laughs> Rose, I don't know what it means. You're just, yeah, you're just throwing out random platitudes. I want to sound smart. You want to sound smart? <laughs> you know what makes you sound smart? Not saying something that you have no idea what it is, right? But um, the... I just like this is just what I'm gonna say, right? Like I actually am so torn because I want to buy this game because looking at the state of play and seeing how you can basically customize everything to your character is really fucking cool. But then again, that would mean giving money to J.K. Rowling, which I don't want to do, right? So um, hey, just, just just do what I do, and I can't go to prison because I'm gonna say it in Spanish, pirata. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so. I'm pretty sure people know what that means, Robinson. Yeah, but they can't arrest me if it's in Spanish. No, they can. No, I don't believe you. Yeah, well, how do you think, like, Hispanic gangsters get in jail? They slip up and they say they say it in English. Well, there are people who speak Spanish in the U.S. government, Robinson. Huh. Yeah. I well, should become a politician. Anyways, the, um... So I am 100% glad, and guess what? I actually found this out. Apparently, the devs also hate J.K. Rowling. <laughs> and so when she came out with that anti-trans stuff, do you know what you can do in character creation to kind of, like, give her a middle finger is that you can make your character transgender and you can make them, inter or make them like, non-binary or whatever, right? How does so... That doesn't affect anything, though. <laughs> No, it doesn't, but it is one of those <laughs> things. It's just kind of like a big old middle finger. It's like a big old, like, verbal fuck you to J.K. Rowling. It so, doesn't do anything, but praise us. Well, no, I think that's actually kind of funny, right? It'd be like, um, I don't know, just, you know that someone has this big issue and you make it kind of like a, a thing that happens at the very beginning. Just unless I can, it. unless I can choose my dick size like Cyberpunk, I'm not in. You mean the two sizes that they had? Yes, they had, they had minimum or maximum. Yeah, great, thank you. Um, you choose minimum for the smaller hitbox. Cool. Um, still, I am excited. Um, I don't know. I'll think about it. Right. I think I'll buy it and then, um, or maybe not. I don't know. I'm just. It comes out in Christmas, right? So I don't fucking care. I'm just going to... Feliz gonna... Navidad. Yeah. But uh, there speaking you go. Of, uh, speaking of buying, uh, the Mario Kart 8 um, Deluxe um, Wave Booster. Yeah. The first wave is now. Uh, so we got eight new tracks. And what we got out is we got the Lucky Cat Cup. 
with Tokyo Blur, Shroom Ridge, Sky Garden, Ninja Hideaway, and the Golden Dash Cup with Paris Promenade, Toad Circuit, Choco Mountain, and Coconut Mall. Okay. Now, um, he, here's what I was worried about. I saw this and I'm like, okay, how many maps we got? Okay, we got one Mario Kart Tour. We got two Mario Kart Tour. Three Mario Kart Tour. We have three Mario Kart Tour tour stages. Mm -hmm. So I was worried that like the new stages, the new waves would just be like, oh hey, buy, go play Mario Kart Tour because it's our cash cow right now. It's a it's a gotcha game, mm. which um, I'm not really a fan of. But oh, okay, here, yeah. Here's um here's the good thing about the stages. They're actually fun. Tokyo Blur was more what I was expecting, where it's just like, ah, okay, it's just a straight track. But Paris Promenade changes every lap, right? Which yeah. is dope. And uh, Ninja Hideaway is just super fun. Mm. That's all okay. it is. The only ones I don't like is Shroom Ridge and Toad Circuit, because they're basic stages, right? Yeah. They're basic tracks. Right. And they brought back Coconut Mall. Yeah. I, I think that's going to be pretty cool, right? Um, I don't know. I haven't played much of Mario Kart, right? Um, I've, I don't know. I want to. And, but, like, apparently Savannah gets stress, um, gets anxiety <laughs> when she plays Mario Kart. So I'm like, okay. Bro, I get it. 200cc. You have to hit the brakes. I know. But still, um, I am, um, I, I like those kind of maps right i think i like the maps more like uh the ones where they're just continual like they don't repeat they just like go from stage a to stage b 100 yeah. i love those like those are probably actually my favorite ones um what was one of them there's one it's like the, uh dk the ski Sum mountain no the summit or something like that i, can't well, I think remember. wario summit yeah dk summit was back on the wii but yeah, yeah. you're right wario summit uh, one of the Rainbow Roads, uh, yeah. one of the F Zero maps. Yeah, like those are pretty cool, right? I think it's it's pretty good, but I don't know. Maybe they'll do like a Mario Maker, but for like uh, the um, what is it racing <laughs> for Mario Kart? I, they did they did do something like that with the Nintendo Labo, which um, I still haven't gotten because. <laughs> I, just, I honestly wouldn't. It just growing. sounds like a. It just sounds like a waste of uh, cardboard to me. Honestly, it, it looks like fun. It looks like but fun, and right. then like after five minutes, you're like, I'm out. Yeah, I'm <laughs> like, done. Yeah, that's I'm probably done. the main reason why I haven't gotten it. Yeah, I mean, still. But yeah, they did with the motorcycle thing. Um, with the motorcycle thing, you can build your own tracks, and what I'm hoping they do. Is I'm hoping they do like the Smash Ballad. Yeah. Where they're like, hey, tell us the all time characters you want. Because, sure, for Smash, like, it was much more difficult. And they had like a lot of stuff they had to get through, a lot of um, barriers. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be that way with Mario Kart 8. Because the way I see it, like, we got six waves, we got wave one out with eight tracks. Um, I think like wave five and six could definitely be like, hey, fan fa vote for your favorite ones. Yeah. Because like Choco Mountain is definitely a fan favorite. It's incredibly simple. You know, it came out on the 64. So of course it's going to be incredibly simple. But it was a fan favorite. So oh, that's yeah? why they remade it in glorious, glorious um, HD. Um, same thing with, if you can hear my dog, she is going wild right now. Yeah, same. No, I mean, kind of, kind of, but that's fine. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Same thing with Sky Garden. Sky Garden came out on the Game Boy Advance, right? So what can you do to? That was back when like every every track was completely flat, mm. but they brought it back and they mm. made it cool. Mm -hmm. So I don't think they're gonna do a voter ballot because all six waves will be released by the end of 2023. So at this point. In March, like we're 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 like um, if they if they do it on a consistent basis, that's like a new wave every month and a half, every two months. Yeah, I guess. So I, what was it? We were discussing about like Nintendo making a new Mario Kart game because it's been a while since Mario Kart Eight came out. Yeah, because they do they do a new one every console, but they did it for the Switch. For the Switch, it's just right. like hey, Mario Kart Eight with all the DLC. Yeah, but honestly, like, if it's not broken, why fix it? 
right? Why come out with something new? Um, mm-hmm. I think that just releasing more DLC for this stuff will keep the fan base okay. I don't really know if there's really an argument to make a new Super Mario, right? Super Mario Kart. Um, if you can just keep adding maps and DLC to the UI and that kind of stuff, I think why not just keep it, right? So yeah. that does yeah. make sense because it's not it's not like Smash Bros. Or like each game is completely different in terms of fighting. It, well, not completely different, but in terms of like fighting and all the intricacies for the competitive stage, yeah. it is very different. Yeah. But for Mario Kart, like there is no competitive. Well, there is competitive Mario Kart, but nobody takes it seriously because you can't turn off items. <laughs> oh, you can't turn off items, dude. No, that sucks. <laughs> I don't know. Um, still, I. I think that um, this sounds good. It sounds great. I feel I'm I'm for Nintendo supporting, and it makes business sense too, right? Why well, go through the effort of developing a new game software if you can just like tweak this one or actually just add on to it, right? Yeah, and, and people and, will still buy it. Yeah, and plus double the amount of tracks for half the price of the original game. That is. That's really a, it's good. It's a good deal. Yeah, it's a good deal if you're someone who really likes that, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I think that that's that's pretty cool, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know what? You know what else is pretty cool? What? I had no idea, but did you know New York Times ranks uh, like New York Times bestsellers? They rank manga. No. Uh, well, actually, yeah, kind of, right? Because they rank books, right? And they also rank graphic novels, so. I think I remember there being kind of like a controversy about like old, you know, old New York Times heads being mad about, you know, them ranking Japanese comics. But then again, they had the same thing when they started doing graphic novels, too. So, yeah, because yeah. in in February 2020, uh, manga is taking 10 out of the 15 spots of the New York Times bestsellers list for February. Oh, shit. Um, okay. And it's uh, three of them. It's three series: Chainsaw Man, Jujutsu Kaisen, and Demon Slayer. Um, specifically, yeah. the highest ranking one is the ninth volume of Chainsaw Man, which I've honestly never heard of. So now I have something I want to read. I don't read manga. I yeah. find it. I find it difficult. Why? But I'm looking. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's my brain because I grew up like just reading comic books. So like going from um, going from right to left instead of left to right really fucks with me. Yeah. Like yeah, I I, I tried it with JoJo's um, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part Six Stone Ocean. Okay. And I had a difficult time doing it. I still I, I didn't even know that I started in the wrong place. Because I opened it up, I'm like, it didn't have the fucking, oh, guess what? You're reading this volume in backwards. See, this is, you know how every manga has that, right? Yeah. This yeah. one didn't. Oh, it, it <laughs> didn't, so, so I, it just scarred you for life? No, it just opened up and I'm like, huh, this seems like it's, oh, they must be doing that thing where they started in the middle of the show and now, like, two pages later, we're going to start at the beginning. <laughs> Huh, why? I thought she was in the room. Why is she out? Oh. Yeah, dude. I, I mean, you know it now. You should be able to do it now, right? I just keep forgetting. <laughs> you keep forgetting? Okay, great. Awesome. Well, yeah, we figured no. out that Robinson has a memory of a goldfish on, on hey. some things. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah? What? Did, did you know that New York Times bestsellers is allowing manga into. <laughs> You know, I've heard that before, and someone else, uh, someone told me that. That actually did surprise me. Yeah. All right, so that's all my micro stories out of the way. You got any good stories? Uh, yeah. So, do you know what the International Energy Agency is? International Energy Agency. I have no clue. Okay. So the International Energy Agency, right, is an autonomous intergovernment organization that was established to, like, in the 1970s in the wake of the oil crisis to kind of, like, help the economy, like, function when there are shortages or when there's strains on the energy market, right? So, um, obviously, with the whole thing with Ukraine happening right now, the International Energy Agency has been 
uh, making headlines recently, mainly because they released a statement that said this, according to insider.com, businessinsider.com, the International Energy Agency wants you to work from home to help curb oil demand and avoid a dangerous supply crunch. You know what? I would love to work from home and avoid the oil demand on my car and my wallet. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. I, I have an electric car, right? So it doesn't really matter to me right now, but still. Plus, you I'm a teacher. They don't me. give a, Plus, I'm a teacher. They don't give a shit about what, where I work. They're just like, no, you're going to come in and you're going to teach these kids. And, uh, and you're uh, going to like it. And you're not, and you can't, you can wear a mask, but no one else is allowed to wear a mask. Uh, like, right? So, um, anyways, like, the international agency said that uh, working from home is actually one of the several ways that countries can cut back on oil and help keep a dangerous supro- or supply crunch at bay. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has threatened the global oil supply not long before peak demand season is set to begin, which is the summer, right? People travel during the summer and they go out, right? Because the winter is like, you know, fucking awful. Well, winter is actually my favorite season, so fuck that. But still, on I Friday, love the winter, but <laughs> every place that has snow fucking hates it. <laughs> yeah. No, I like snow, I like winter, I like all that kind of shit, right? Like, living in Germany was kind of one of those things where I was just like, I like this. Like, I just sat there and I was just like, I don't care. I hate being hot, right? You can always mm. put clothes on when oh, I'm, I'm cold. There's only so much clothing I can remove before I'm arrested. I so, can 100% agree. I am too warm at all times. Yeah. So the IEA laid out a 10-point plan to reduce oil use and to help ease the pain at the pump as gas prices soar. The intergovernmental agency said that the plan would cut oil demand by 2.7 million barrels a day within the first four months, which is roughly the equivalent to the oil demand of all the cars in China if it's fully carried out in advanced economies. As a result of the Russia's appalling aggression against Ukraine, the world may well be facing its biggest oil supply shock in decades, with huge implications uh, for our economies and societies. Uh, and that is a quote from the executive director, Faith Byroll, uh, of the IEA. Um, because the, of the implications. Well, I mean, it kind of is, right? So, um, the whole thing, right, is I... Uh, Besides working from home, right, up to three days a week, which the agency said could produce oil savings of 500,000 barrels per day, another step including reducing speed limits on highways, implementing car-free Sundays in cities, and making public transportation more affordable. In addition, the IEA recommended carpooling more often, promoting efficient driving for freight trucks, using high-speed and night trains over planes, avoiding business air travel where possible, and alternating private car access to roads in big cities and supporting the adoption of electric vehicles. Right. So, you know what I would love yeah. to? Give me money for an electric video. V- v- vehicle. I mean, I can give you money for an electric video right now. Give me the money other... for an electric vehicle, please. Yeah. You know, um, I have to say, right, like, um, I honestly think that working from home would actually be one of the best things there, right? Um there are a lot of benefits to working from home. A lot of people set their own hours and they work as productive as they would be in the office. Right. And with the pandemic, it kind of showed that whole thing of the reason why people want you in um, office settings is because they want to micromanage what you do, which, you know, is fucking awful. Right. Um, I honestly don't have a gripe about going into work as a teacher because that's my fucking job right and you know it's a lot harder for students to not pay attention to me when they actually have to sit in front of me versus when they're on zoom and they can just turn off the camera and turn off their noise now you have to look at my face i know right but also yeah no i get that i can't tell you how many times i was asked to turn my camera on and i had to turn the my voice on and say, I'm on the toilet right now. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that would be fucking fine, right? That would be okay. But then, guess what happened? Um, they lost basically a year of instruction because they weren't doing shit, right? And a yep. ton of kids failed. So, I understand the whole reason for, for what not wanting to go online, right? Um, 
but also parents, right? But that's a different conversation to have. I honestly agree. I what think are you talking working... about? The parents are never incorrect. Uh, yes, they are. 100%. They're parents. How could they? Uh, they had a child. That's how they were incorrect in the first part. <laughs> uh, ah. <laughs> you mean I have to be responsible for this person that I made with my spouse? Just what do you me mean t- I have to make sure the that they're great? <laughs> Dude, I don't know. I don't know. Like, it's one of those things of, like, a small, like, side note to this is, you know how we have all this technology to, like, check email and check everything? Well, we also have this technology to check grades. So the school that I work at, we send emails and calls home when the kid dips below a 70. And then they also have access to the to the grade book, right? So they, they have access to our grade book, which means that they can look at it at any time from anywhere that they have internet access to see what their kids are making in their, in their classes. Right. Well, my favorite part is when parents have those three things happening, right? The phone calls home, the emails home and the, and the access. And then they get mad at the teacher for like, why, why did I not know that my kid was failing? (laughs) Um, Because you never checked. Yeah, I know, right? It's in the like, sauce. but they get mad. They get mad at us for that kind of stuff, right? Like, that's kind of one of those things of just like, huh? You have it's a you sauce. have a phone, right? Because they know that you're calling me <laughs> from a cell phone. Because I don't know. Still, it's it's weird. But I, if I had a job that I could work from home, because I am a homebody, right? I am a fucking homebody. My peak vacation. My peak summer vacation is a staycation, right? If basically I have my bed here, I have my computer (laughs) here, I have everything I want here, the YMCA gym is here, everything that I'm comfortable with is here. Why would I want to go anywhere else except if it were to like visit my friends in Germany or to visit... um, You know, shout out to Constantine who just recently got married like a year ago, but still... Um, the whole thing is Mazel Tov. Yeah, Mazel Tov, right? I don't know um, what that means either. It means congratulations in Hebrew, Robinson. Okay, so it is good. Yes, it is. You usually say <laughs> Mazel Tov for like major life events, but because ah. uh, I say it unironically and people think I'm Jewish, I'm like, nope, <laughs> nope, not not Jewish. But then again, <laughs> nope, I live just in Texas, mazel. so you know, um, nope, I'm a I'm a goy, right? But still, um. I love the whole factor of like staying at home. And I honestly like remember when the first part of the pandemic happened and like energy companies were like, oh, fuck, we don't have like we can't sell oil to anyone. And oil dropped into negative like dollars per barrel that like one day that one day there was a negative, a negative in oil product, like in the price of a barrel, I was like, what the fuck is that? Right. It was something that we had like never really seen for a while. And it was certainly something I had never seen in my entire life. Right. Um, and you know, the air felt cleaner because people weren't, you know, um, out and about as often. Right. Um, a lot of wildlife came back actually, and started making more appearances because people were driving less. Um, I don't know, dude. Like, I think maybe, like, public transportation should be more invested in. I think there should be a high-speed rail in the United States. But also, what do you think? Because I think that this is a good idea. Oh, yeah. I would really like that because, honestly, when I look at other countries, one thing that always gets me, it's like, huh, they don't own cars. Yeah, and it's because um, their infrastructure allows for that, right? Yeah, 100%, right? Which is wild. Which yeah, is, that's you know, awesome. it's cool. I like it. But, like, for United States, I don't think that's something we, unfortunately, we can't adapt to just yet of how our infrastructure is. Uh, No, I think the boomers need to go away <laughs> first. I mean, what are we going to do? <laughs> destroy everything to build Japan? I would love to, like, have Japanese neighborhoods because they seem very efficient. Uh, they are because yeah, Japan it's, has it's very limited walking. space to build on. <laughs> it's all walking. It's all bikes. And there's like, yeah, you want to go to the movie theaters? There's one down the street. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, when I lived in Berlin, right, I lived in Mitte, which is like the center of town. And I could literally walk wherever I needed to go, right? If I needed to go get groceries, boom, five minutes. If I needed to go get Duner kebab, boom, five minutes. If I needed to go pick up, like, you know, alcohol or anything like that, boom, five minutes. Like, everything exactly. was so, was super close. So if I wanted to go visit Constantine, that was, like, a 15-minute train ride, right? As opposed to, like, a 15-minute car ride. So I, I am 100% for, and there's new plans um, uh, by the... Uh, public transportation secretary for the United States of putting in a high speed rail in Texas, which would connect a lot of different cities, which I'm 100% for dude. Sweet high speed Lord. rail would be add, fucking amazing. Right. Add, add an undercarriage for cars. Yeah. I could like visit whole, my family. <laughs> I know. Right. You could, no, or you well, know what? I mean, Oh, that hey. sounds great. Like I'll just drive. I'll just like dr do the drive, like through um, new, new Mexico or whatever. Just arrive in the top of Texas, pay for that like, f pay for that like five day parking, just yeah. take the train down to Colleen. Yeah, like the high speed rail, is, high speed rail, especially in Japan, has been like fucking like amazing, because high speed rail you go four times faster than what a car can go at, at the speed limit, right? Because women, actually, I think don't don't quote me on that because I know that I'm gonna get called out for that, but still. Um, uh, high speed rail. It is, um, <laughs> well, you don't want 155 do you don't, miles per hour. You don't want to jump inside of a high speed rail because when you jump, you'll like fly to the back. Yeah. So the, uh, high speed rail, um, is 155 miles per hour, which 155. Wow. Is <laughs> a insane. fucking, that's, that's, that's fucking amazing. Right. Like, um, uh, compared to, like, a car going 70, 75 miles per hour, let's say that someone's speeding because it's we double. all do it. It's double. Right? It's close to double, right? It is double if you're going 70. If it's if you're going 85, which a lot of people do, it is near double, right? You get there twice as fast as if the best someone part is was there. No, no traffic. Yeah, the best part is no traffic. You don't have to fucking, like, drive. You don't have to fuck... Uh, that's bad because I actually like driving, but um, you can you can just yeah. show up with you can show up with your with your switch and a yeah. portable battery. Yeah, or you could take a nap, right? And I, I would strongly advise napping in public transportation. I saw a man get a finger to just placed in his mouth. Yeah, well, the other part of it is like, um, what is it? High speed trains. Some of the fastest ones can cruise two hundred and twenty miles per hour. Oof. Yeah, dude. Like 220 miles per hour. How right? badly like, do that's you want fucking, this Whataburger? <laughs> I know that, but still, right? That's awesome. That's fucking that's amazing. Dope. I would love to have a way to visit. Like, imagine going from like Colleen to Austin, which in itself takes about an hour, maybe an hour and 10 minutes, depending on traffic. If you're in a car, right? If you took the mm -hmm. high speed rail, you could get there in maybe 20 minutes. And imagine the money you save on gasoline. Yeah. I mean, well, you, not for you, but for me. Well, yeah, but still, like, I would I would love to have better train infrastructure. I would absolutely love to have better train infrastructure in the United States because it's just, it's so much more convenient. It really is. And, yeah, you don't have a, like... You'd have to go to the train station. You'd have to do like whatever, but you already do that with airports, right? So mm -hmm. you know, and I like, fucking hate airports. Yeah, airports suck. I'd rather I'd rather stand the entire time than yeah. force my massive body into that tiny seat. Yeah, no, and train seats are comfortable, right? And train seats are like they're like the ergonomic chairs that you see people sit in, right? So mm -hmm. I would be completely fine with that being the case, right? Um, and working from home, having trains, I'm just saying the same things over and over and over right now because I just, I'm gushing about this because I like this idea. I think there's a lot that we can do to really minimize the amount of carbon that we put out. And this could also be a good way to minimize the amount of like, you know, power and profit that oil corporations have because fuck those people. So, you know, I'm for it. I really am. I just, 
I don't know what we could do to get that going, right? <laughs> so we no need clue. it. We but, fucking need it. But uh, let's end the story. We we hit an hour, so let's end this episode on something that we can all be happy about. Uh, from Global News by Catherine Manny. Oh shit! All yeah. of the super yachts seized from Russian oligarchs so far. Also, real quick, um, what's an oligarch? I assume it's like nobility. N- not really. That would be an aristocracy, right? So uh, an oligarchy is where you have um, few people, right? A group of people that control government procedures, right? They control the power in that government system. So an oligarch is someone who is a part of that group that controls everything. Not everyone, just that one person. Okay. So Right. So, all around the world, super yachts owned by Russian oligarchs are being seized and impounded thanks to ongoing sanctions from Canada, the United States, and the European Union in response to Russia's invasion of the Ukraine. Once again, our hearts go out to everybody in the Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, government authorities excuse me, have burped <laughs> that they will continue to target Russians to continue, continue to target the Russia's super rich who have gained vast wealth and political power by allying with the Russian president, Vladimir Putin. Mm-hmm. I'm saying it the way Steven Seagal says it. Oh, great. So, you know, so super yachts, one, um, super yacht, like boats. Cool. Yeah. Cool. 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 Super yeah. yachts are like the biggest waste of money you can have. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's well, just, yachts it's, are just boats, but super yachts are like, do you want your own cruise liner, Robinson? <laughs> exactly. Like you can, you can, you can have your yacht. You can have your fishing boat. Go out there, have a good time out in the water. The uh, super yachts, often valued in hundreds of millions of dollars, in annual upkeep can reach to fifty million a year. Okay, awesome. Like so, honestly, just just get a fucking I would just just fucking charter a cruise ship. Dude, I don't know. Like don't that sounds like way too much money for me. Mhm. Yeah. So, we we have a list of super yachts that have been taken over and impounded. And this is just glorious. Um Okay. Up here up here we have the Lady M. The Lady right. Maiden. A 213-foot super yacht owned by Alexei Mordashov was seized by the Italian government on March 4th. It's a steel baron and listed as... Uh, no. Uh, Mordashov is a steel baron and listed as Russia's wealthiest man with a net worth of around $30 billion. Okay. And now, his $27 million vessel... Um, a 464-foot Nord... Uh, has been taken in by the Italian government. Damn. 460 feet. That's a lot of boat. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, right. I'm looking at the photos. No big ass water slide. So. No. Oh, uh, shit. This uh, chump change, dude. Man, <laughs> if you're going to have this much money, have fun with it. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> I understand power. I understand power and money. I don't understand status. Yeah. That, that's okay. the only part I don't understand. But I understand the power and money. I want some of my own. Mm. Okay. And then we got the Lena. The Lena is a 132-foot boat owned by Genida Timcheko, um, another oligarch with Tysi Putin. Valued at... This um, boat valued at $8 million, now owned by the Italian government. Mm. The Sai mm. A which is an abbreviation for selling yacht A, was seized in the port of Triste, Italy. Italy just making money here. Oh, yeah. No, it's the Italian fun- Riviera is going to get some <laughs> fucking funding. Dude. Oh, our police are going to have the new uh, the new Ferraris. <laughs> Bro, I, yeah. remember, I remember when that image came out in, like, 2010. Like, yeah, I was well, like, where are you going to put the person? They, there's no back seat for them to, to hand, be handcuffed in. Oh, that's the fun part. We drive the Lamborghini, we drive the Ferrari really slow, and they walk behind it. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Yeah. So, the, the Sai A, valued at $590 million, um, owned by Andy Menchenko, 
billionaire owner of Eurochem Group. Okay. Um, once again, now belongs to Italy. The Valerie. <laughs> now this, the Spanish decided Italy's getting too much money. We got to step in here. Yeah. And they seized the Valerie, a 279-foot super yacht on Monday. Yeah. Um, that belonged to Sergei Chem- Chemizov, a former KGB officer who heads Rostec, a Russian okay. state conglomerate specializing in defense. Mm. This boat is valued at $140 million. Shit, okay. The Amore Vero was seized by the French on March 3rd, believing to belong to Igor Sechin, a tw- $120 million boat. Oh, God, dude. I don't know. Like, that's that's so... Like, it's one of these things of... I, They're billionaires, right? So they're obviously feeling the pinch from having this boat taken, right? But it'd be like, hey, Robinson, I took 20 pennies out of your paycheck. Like that I'm would fighting be... for those pennies. Yeah, you <laughs> love those one pennies, f- but still. That's one-fifth of a can of Arizona. <laughs> it's, but still, like, um, it's... I, I saw recently the U.S. government actually wanted is putting a bounty on information of super yachts owned by Russians in the United States. And I'm like, is this the time when snitching is OK? Right. Because you can get up to seven million dollars of rewards if you actually like lead to the acquisition of a boat. And I'm like, dude, fuck, that would be awesome. Right. So I feel like hmm, I feel like snitching is only bad when you do it against other rappers. Um, yeah, or you betray people, right? But I don't, I have no love for these <laughs> Russian oligarchs, right? Fuck these people. And Me neither, which is why I'm taking so much pleasure in just reading off this list. The amount of money that they're losing, because, yep. I mean, like, anywhere between 20 to $50 million just for upkeep alone is fucking insane, right? That that just, is... Just to cause, keep the damn thing. I know. His, uh, what is it? My dad... I know how big boats can or how much boats can cost and especially maintenance on boats, especially because my dad owned a boat for a bit and it was a money pit. It is a money pit. Boats are fucking money pits. They just are a void where greenbacks go to die. So you can't just just keep it on the water. You got to rent for a place or bring it on land. Right. And you have to also like do maintenance on the motor, which is very temperamental. Um, the boat itself has to be scrubbed. It's got to go like, there's a ton of shit that you got to do. And that was just like a small little like speed boat that we would do for like water skiing. Right. Oh, that's so, fun. Yeah. No, that's very uh, fun. Wakeboarding was my thing when I was in high school. Right. I loved wakeboard or wakeboarding. Um, but the boats are fucking expensive and just for small boats too. So I can't imagine what the maintenance bill on a fucking super yacht, right, would look like. Because I know Amazon's Jeff Bezos, um, you know, Jeffrey, has been, uh, what is it? It has a helicopter pad or another boat to take it to that boat. And I'm like, yo, that's too big of a boat. That's too big of a boat. You need to get rid of it, right? Boat too and, big. Not enough water. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't know. I can't imagine how much time and effort you put into these super yachts for very little, right? Because if you own a boat, obviously you're someone who likes to go out on the water. But even when we had one, right, and we went out in the water quite a bit, we didn't go out every weekend. We didn't go, um, like, there were times where we didn't go out on the boat because it was, like, winter, right? So It's cold outside. You know? I just don't see the point of owning something like that, right? I just don't see the... But then again, maybe I'm not a rich asshole, so I can't I can't tell you why. I told you it is status, I think. <laughs> it really is, right? I, I don't know. I, mean, I just want the people. money. I just want the money and power. I want to be part of the shadow government. Money, power, you wanna no an, status. You want to be an oligarch? Is that your, is that your thing? Now nah, I want to be part of the Shadow Patriots from Metal Gear. <laughs> yeah, that, that's genius. my dream job. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody knows who I am, so they can't do anything about me. On top of that, I run the country. And money. I assume money. Money for maidens. Yes. Nobody can call me maidenless ever again. Well, I can call you maidenless right now. So. Yeah, but, the, but then it won't be true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Another boat we got up, um, taken in by the German authorities, the Dilbar, a boat 450 feet in length, uh, which is the size of one and a half football fields. Yo, <laughs> I'm looking why? at this boat. I'm looking at this boat. It is one, two, three, four, five, six stories at least. Okay, like can you two basement tell me levels. Where, what is it called again? The Dill Bar. The Dill Bar, yeah. About um, two basement levels and four floors, size of one of a half football fields. Uh, jeez, six hundred and fifty million dollars. It can house more than thirteen one hundred and thirty people. As a 25 meter long swimming pool and two helipads. Yo, dude, I I have to say, like, I think the pictures on the internet don't do it justice because it just looks like a boat. But then also, there's a full grown helicopter, like a full sized fat ass helicopter <laughs> right later. on the back of it, right? <laughs> and so I'm just like, maybe I. And then there's one where it's like a tiny person, but it's like, that's so much boat. Why do you need that much boat? 130 right. people. It is an actual cruise liner. If you bought this thing and started making cruises to make money, yeah. <laughs> even then I'd be like, there is so much more ways you could have spent your money for more money. Mm. But guess what? It now belongs to Germany. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Dude, like sell that shit. I don't know. Sell it for parts, right? No. Um, no we will you have, say, the, we will you have say the best how much is beer it? cruise ever. How much is uh, it? Six hundred and fifty million dollars. Okay, because I'm looking at uh, an, a German post about this boat, right? Um, yeah. From like, and it says that um, I'm reading it from the German is that it reportedly cost to build eight hundred million dollars. So it may not be worth like eight hundred, but it, like eight hundred million dollars to build it. It employs eighty four full time crew members and <laughs> contains a. It's like, yeah, the largest indoor swimming pool and start on a super yacht, which is eight, 180 cubic meters. Dude, what the fuck? Why do you need this much boat? What's up well, with this? Now I can think of a hundred reasons why you would want this boat, not why you would need it. For me, you know what I would do? Hmm. Isolation. Hmm. Just fat isolation. But even then, I don't need a boat that big for isolation. I would just get a fucking house. Right? <laughs> like, that's the thing. Houseboat. You could have all Houseboat. these things in a house, right? Houseboat. Yarg. Yeah. I don't know, dude. Like, I just... Yeah. Yarg. Har, fiddle dee dee. Yeah. Um, <laughs> still, um, it says, I think that German authorities clarified that this yacht was not seized, uh, but was no. covered by export control sanctions, meaning that it will not be able to leave Germany without permission. So, <laughs> yes and no, right? They've taken it, but not really, right? <laughs> not in the nope. same lengths that, like, Italy has. Dude, 40 full-time members of uh, 40 employees. You're like, just I just want to go damn around thing the bay, running. right? Yeah, just Jesus. Keep... Fucking Christ. You bought a business that doesn't make money. You are paying employees that don't provide anything. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, damn. Yeah, that's, fucking, pirate, that's, dee -dee. that's so fucking huge. Do what you want, cause a pirate is free. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, I just can't still, get houseboat out of my head. <laughs> like I just don't. You need a swimming pool in a fucking boat <laughs> <laughs> <It's> in <laughs> the ocean. Do do my idea. Just put a big net behind it. That way, no fish can get in. No sharks. And then you can do the big water slide. Nobody's doing the big water slide. It's because they don't appreciate life, Robinson. Well, yeah. Yes. Okay, well... And then we have the last yeah. one, the Lady right. Anastasia. Um, another super yacht seized by the Spanish government. A little bit more humble. Only $8 million, 157 feet long. That's still fucking huge, right? <laughs> it is, but compared to the deal bar... <laughs> Lady Anastasia, <laughs> you're nothing to me. Yeah, dude, 100%, I guess. Um, still, any super yacht, I'm just kind of like, yo, fucking damn, man. Like, shit, like, that's, that's insane, dude. I don't know. We're not in the politics business. 
No, we're, we're in the not. Boat business. Yeah, we're. I don't know how these things like. How is there still a business for this kind of shit, right? I feel like this is a high um, price, low volume business. We make money off of this shit, right? I don't, I don't think that's the point. People who have money usually don't focus on making money. People who made money focus on making money. <laughs> oh, damn. Damn, damn, damn. Well, anyways, I think that that's it's. I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna have to go and do something else other than think about the obscene amount of wealth that some people have, right? Mm -hmm. And Shit. our Shack Attack Award this week goes to the German, Italian, Spanish government. Thank you for seizing these boats yep. and making some rich assholes very upset. And remember, and, if you're a yeah. Russian oligarch, you can always message us. We got an email at nerdahellpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, we got a Twitter. I whether or not you would get a picture of an infected uh, wound on a pig. That would be something you might receive from me if you do email us. Uh, if you're a Russian oligarch. If you're just a regular person, hey, what up? <laughs> right? And, I won't send you one. And or if I you're will, a Russian, if you're if into you're, that. <laughs> if you're a Russian oligarch or a regular person, you can always send us money. Go ahead and contact us on twitter we got youtube we got spotify stanley's got a twitch i got a youtube and a tiktok uh follow us on anchor leave us a rating on spotify do all that mm -hmm. good stuff yeah and with all that out of the way i'm gonna give my go to hell to the russian oligarchs uh, y'all got I'm too much money my, i'm gonna give my go to hell on top of that to jk rowling hey you also have too much money goodbye everybody <laughs> bye